Hello everyone, welcome to our PMP exam questions and answer solving session for September. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. Okay, so out of the five questions that we are going to solve today, the target will be to get all the five out of the five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation. Okay. Also, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you might want to check out my training courses on Udemy. And you can also consider to join my YouTube membership community. All of them are very well reviewed amongst the students like you. And I will provide all the details on how you can join the same later on in this video. Okay. So give this video a like, get a pen and a paper, and let's get started with question number one. Okay. So question number one, guys please read the question go through the options and try to answer it before we solve this together okay you can pause the video here if you wish to right so let's get started for an agile team working on a cyber security upgrade a tool is needed to collaborate amongst team members working across different time zones okay so it's a globally diversified and globally dispersed team. The tool should ensure spontaneous verbal communication and all the remote workstations, including burn up charts, burn down charts, etc., should be visible at all times. Okay, so I hope you know what is a burn up chart, what is a burn down chart, etc, etc. If not, I would recommend that go and watch a few videos on the agile topics which I have created on this channel. Okay, so which of the following solutions should be most appropriate? Okay, fishbowl windows, on demand video conferencing, workstation screen sharing and information radiator monitors. Okay, now this is a question on the Agile topic, guys, and it goes without saying that if you are writing the PMP exam, these kind of uh, terms such as fishbowl windows or information radiators, etc., should be at your fingertips, right? You should not like start thinking about uh, these terms if you face a question. You should be knowing these terms for now. Now, I am hoping you have that kind of a knowledge already. If not, please go back to your textbooks. Please go back to your agile practice guide and study these topics. OK, now let's start solving the question. Now, the requirement is that uh, the tool should ensure spontaneous verbal communication. OK, now verbal can be virtual as well. OK, do not think that verbal needs to be like physical uh, face to face conversation. It can happen virtually, but as long as it is verbal, it is verbal, right? And uh, all the remote workstations, including burn up charts, burn down charts should be visible at all times. So it's a 24 into seven window which uh, uh, the scenario is asking for okay so if you know about visual windows uh it serves exactly the requirements that has been stated in the question okay it is a 24 into 7 uh, live video conferencing or a video streaming platform where uh, you can share information you can uh, get updates from your respective team members who are in a different geographic location and also you can do sort of huddle sessions within your team members where actually you try to solve a complex problem where other people are watching you virtually okay whilst you are doing it okay with your uh, core team members okay so fishbowl windows definitely uh, meets all the requirements that has been asked in the scenario however before we mark this sunset as the right one let's look at option b c and d and also reason them out and uh, assess it to understand that whether those options are incorrect or not okay all right so next option is on demand video conferencing okay now on demand is something which is again uh, is not something which uh, could be visible at all times sometimes it may be on demand sometimes it may not be on demand okay so that is something which is definitely uh, not the right answer choice however uh, video conferencing does not also ensure that you have uh, visibility to all the remote workstations right so that is also something which needs to be looked at so that is why option b is incorrect let's look at option c workstation screen sharing now this meets the requirement of uh, being visible at all times however you need to understand that if you are sharing a workstation that might cause sort of a issue in terms of privacy when you are doing a cyber security project because some of the projects which you may not want to share with your team members that might also become visible in a workstation screen sharing okay however if you are 
just merely sharing a screen uh, it might not mean that you are also sharing the upgrades in terms of the burn up and burn down charts or also sharing the updates in terms of how your project is progressing with respect to your velocity and things like that right so typical agile uh, uh, let's say metrics with, with which you track projects so workstation screen sharing is a very very broad choice and that is why this is definitely incorrect it uh, might have been the correct choice but we have a very very strong option of fishbowl windows which meets all the requirements of the scenario that has been stated in the question workstation screen sharing in terms of uh, evaluating with the fishbowl window really falls apart okay it does not capture all the let's say advantages with fishbowl windows definitely have okay uh, next is information radiator monitors okay now the good part about this option is it definitely captures the information okay so for example it definitely captures the burn up charts it definitely captures the burn down charts and uh, things like that right uh, however you need to keep in mind that you are looking for a solution or you are looking for a tool which ensures spontaneous verbal communication now you tell me guys does information radiator enable spontaneous communication it does not okay the reason is information radiators are uh, pictorial representations or dashboards which you see on screen now the screens may be virtual but it is sort of a passive communication where you can go and view the project updates or the project progress okay it's a one sided communication from the project team to the rest of the stakeholders and that is why information radiators is a incorrect answer choice because it does not capture this element of spontaneous verbal communication because information radiator is a sort of a dashboard which uh, can be put up uh, physically in a location or it can be put up virtually as well doesn't matter however it is a passive form of communication and it is a one way communication going from the project team side to the stakeholder side and that is why option d is also incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option a which is the fishbowl windows now if you are preparing for your pmp exam guys i would suggest that you check out my pmp exam preparation courses on udemy all the courses are very highly rated amongst the students and many pmp aspirants like you have passed their pmp exam with the help of these courses you can check the student reviews on udemy and all the links will be provided in the description section of this video in case you are interested to join okay and now let's move on to question number 2 right so question number 2 guys the drill will remain the same please read the question go through the options and try to answer it before we solve this together you can pause the video here if you wish to right so let's get started a project manager for a drug trial project has received the agreements constraints and the project mandate after receiving this information what should be the first step okay so you need to understand what is a project agreement what is a project constraint or what are project constraints and what is a project mandate now i hope you have gone through the entire syllabus of the pmp exam if not you can check out my 35 pdu courses or whichever pdu courses you are following from your instructors and if you go through those details you will know that these items are definitely artifacts which are generated during the initiation or the pre initiation stage of a project okay and probably those are the items which generally goes into your uh, project chartering process to have a project charter which is the output of your initiation process right so as simple as that so the question is asking that a project manager for a drug trial project has received uh, these items the agreements constraints and the project mandate so these are the artifacts and what should be the first step after that okay so let's look at the options one by one review communications management plan to inform all stakeholders incorrect okay because you are still in the initiation phase communication management plan has yet not been prepared so there is no question of reviewing it at this point right so be aware of these options where uh, probably pmi can try to trick you in terms of giving you an artifact which has not been generated at a particular stage okay it's a very classical uh, wrong answer choice which you need to be aware of let's look at option b work with procurement to find analyze on the best procurement strategy again incorrect right because uh, finalization of procurement strategy comes as part of the planning stage of the project okay where you develop your procurement management plan again we are still at the initiation okay you have received the project mandate you have the agreements uh, you have the project constraints which could be in terms of your uh, enterprise environmental factors uh, organizational process assets etc etc okay again a classic example of a wrong answer choice where you are uh, 
directed to review or uh, consider something which has not yet been created or which has not yet been present at a particular stage where your project is in at this moment which is initiation right so option b is also incorrect let's look at option c review and understand the business case and the project objectives okay a uh, good option so basically business case might link directly to project mandate and you are a project manager you are still in initiation so it is important and it is probably uh, sensible for you to review and understand the business case and the project objectives before proceeding further okay however let's hold this option for now and probably come back to it after we have evaluated option d and option d is ensuring project charter approval from the sponsor okay now this could be an option as well uh, that uh, you get your project charter approval from the sponsor however take a step back and ask yourself that is the project charter already created okay do you really know that okay probably not right because uh, as of now you have just received the agreements you have just received the constraints or let's say the enterprise environmental factors which might influence your project either positively or negatively and you have received the project mandate okay so probably it's a very very far-fetched assumption that you have already created a project charter out of it and if you go back to the question stem it is asking from you what should be the first step okay so the first step after you have received these items is definitely to review and understand the business case and the project objectives getting a project charter approval from the sponsor could be okay but that is not the first step okay because you need to have the project charter first before you actually go and take the approval of this one okay now on this question it is very important for you to understand that how you should let's say internalize or understand how ittos or the inputs tools and techniques and outputs works in your pmp exam process right so if you look at this itto chart which you will find in your process group practice guide as well i get a lot of questions uh, being asked in terms of okay whether i need to like uh, remember this chart or whether i need to memorize this chart etc etc now i have created an entire video on this topic which you can see on screen now you can go ahead and watch that video after this one which is very important for you to understand however just to summarize on what we have discussed in that video already that when it comes to such ittos you need not to memorize these by part or you need not to memorize this as a rote memorization but you need to understand the applicability of it and with the context of this question you will see how we have applied this ITTO chart to arrive at the correct answer okay now if you look at the inputs you will see agreements here okay you will see agreements here as well you will see enterprise environmental factors which probably is linked to the constraints as well okay and you will also see the business documents which is the business case which is the phrase in the answer option which you see right here okay so the output is the project charter output is the assumption log now once you have got the project charter then the question comes of getting the approval from the sponsor okay so option d is basically jumping one step and moving on to the next step okay so beware of these kind of situations where uh, the pmp exam might try to trick you okay but since you are watching these videos on my youtube channel and i hope that you have watched the previous 12 13 months videos as well where i do monthly q s month after month for you and if you have done that diligently there is no way uh, you can fall for these tricks okay so that is how we will end the discussion for this question so the correct answer to this question is option c which is to review and understand the business case and the project objectives and that is the best first step you can take as the project manager after you have received the agreements constraints and the project mandate for your drug trial project now before we move on to question number three guys i would suggest that you check out my membership community on youtube as part of your pmp exam preparation i share daily posts on pmp exam tips tricks and strategies via this platform okay and also if you are a tier 2 member you get a chance to speak with me one on one over a live session twice every month okay it's a monthly subscription based service okay and you can cancel anytime you want to all the links will be provided in the description section of this video so please do check it out okay and now let's move on to question number three right so question number three guys please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together you can pause the video here if you wish to the drill will remain the same as per the previous questions right so let's get started the coding work stream in a recent application development cycle for an AI enabled cybersecurity program 
did not include the urgent change requests already implemented by the product design work stream okay so such a long sentence right so please be aware that in your pmp exam you will get such complex sentences which has a lot of phrases associated and uh, complex sentence constructions as well okay so you should have the capability of deciphering through the content of such sentence structure okay so what it is essentially saying is that um, the coding work stream which generally comes after the design work stream right so first you design and then you code right for a particular product so the coding work stream in a recent application development project for a ai enabled cyber security program did not include the urgent change request which was already implemented by the design okay so the design has already incorporated those uh, changes or updates uh, in their uh, sort of uh, work stream however when the coding actually coded those uh, design features in the program they omitted it or they were not able to include those for some reason okay so basically it got missed out so the product owner informed the product design team about the changes in a daily stand up so uh, these uh, design changes which were done okay the product owner actually did communicate it okay in a daily stand up meeting okay but no one basically recorded the same and that is the reason it uh, typically got lost in translation everyone forgot about it and when the coders actually started coding they didn't have an input that they needed to do some changes okay so they worked on a previous uh, design version what should the project manager do to avoid this problem in the future okay so the keyword in this question stem is in the future so it is not asking you to solve something now it is asking you to take some measures which will help you to avoid such situations in future okay those two are very very different questions which you need to address if someone asks you that okay what you will do to solve something now vis-a-vis he or she may ask you that what you need to do to solve something in the future okay those two could be very very different responses so please be aware of such kind of nuances which the pmp exam will definitely test you on in the actual exam okay so let's uh, evaluate the options one by one option a redefine the product backlog before the next iteration okay so you can redefine it you can add something within the backlog which will now take care of the changes which the coding team needs to do however will it help you to tackle this issue in future no right because you are doing some damage control or some firefighting which is okay to do for this sprint or for this iteration but it does not give me the confidence that if it is a systemic fix that will solve this issue for future iterations as well so that is why option a is definitely incorrect Let's look at option B. Increase the frequency of daily stand-up meetings and update this in a retrospective. Pointless, okay? Totally pointless because daily stand-up meetings are called daily stand-ups because they happen once in a day, okay? Generally, in agile projects, you will never see daily stand-up meetings happening twice or thrice in a day. That is number one, unproductive. And secondly, it totally beats the purpose of a daily stand-up meetings because in a daily stand-up meeting, you review your last 24 hours and you plan for your next 24 hours, right? And that is the entire intent of having a daily stand-up meeting, okay? Now, just having the term retrospective, which might link to this uh, phrase of in the future, does not make this option correct, okay? Of course, this needs to be discussed in a retrospective because this is sort of learn from experience which needs to be incorporated for your future iterations or maybe extending it to your next project as well however increasing the frequency of daily stand-up meetings is unproductive and it is not the typical agile ceremony of the daily stand-up meetings where you have like two stand-up meetings in a 24-hour window okay so that is why option b is also incorrect let's look at option c conduct an ad hoc retrospective and add the new change features in the design scope okay so right you can conduct an ad hoc retrospective that is something which uh, generally is you call a retrospective uh, within the sprint itself and uh, you review it okay as part of your overall uh, uh, learn from experience and it is something of a damage control that you are doing however in retrospective you plan for some systemic fixes okay and you add the new features in the design scope or let's say in the coding scope as well okay so you can say that okay this is also the coding scope okay Okay, coding design scope however you want to call it and you add the new change features in the design or in the coding scope and that is how you actually uh, add those to the retrospective which takes care of tackling such kind of issues in the future and once you have added these uh, change features uh, in the design scope now because uh, mind that these were uh, 
suggested in the daily stand up but no one did record it so you need to add it now as part of your uh, user story okay this was something which was uh, informal at that stage the so first make it formal as part of your uh, design scope and then extend it as part of an implementation process in your coding scope right so option c looks like a very very plausible option to me let's look at option d conduct a team building session and make and make team members aware of the ground rules totally pointless okay totally pointless that uh, okay uh, how it is basically solving the situation for the future okay it is very very generic uh, doesn't relate to the actual scenario doesn't pull any context from the actual scenario that why you are doing a team building exercise okay uh, you are making team aware of the ground rules uh, okay this is a standalone it's okay uh, this option standalone if you evaluate this this might make sense for any project but how it is relevant to this actual project right it is not so please be aware of such kind of wrong answer choices which uh, might look okay in isolation however when you put this in context with the question scenario it might not make any head or tail of it okay so that is why option d is definitely incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option c which is to conduct an adopted perspective first that will tackle your uh, uh, issues that will tackle in terms of your problem statement of not having these issues in the future basically during a retrospective you define some systemic actions okay as part of your learn from experience and then what you need to do is you need to add these new change features as part of your design scope first because mind that these were initially suggested and no one did record it and then extend it to your uh, coding scope definition as well okay so the correct answer to this question is option c now before we move on to question number 4 guys make sure you do subscribe to my my channel PMP with Ray for more such videos like this for your PMP exam preparation okay your support really helps educational channels like this to grow on YouTube and now let's move on to question number four right so question number four guys the drill will remain the same please read the question go through the options and try to answer it before we solve this together you can pause the video here if you wish to right a project manager who is managing multiple projects at the same time has a new team members starting in a new project okay which is in the initiation phase however the other projects are trending between execution and close out over the next few months so this project manager who is uh, probably experienced okay because he is managing or he or she is managing multiple project teams okay at the same time and uh, that project has new team members starting and the project is in the initiation phase However, the other projects are trending between execution and closeout within the next few months. Okay, point to be considered. What is the best course of action by the project manager to develop this new team? So the problem statement is to develop this new team. Okay, in the light of the initiation phase. So let's look at the options one by one. Encourage the team members to define ways of working to ensure professional cohesion. Uh, okay, probably this might be a good option because you are actually uh, enabling servant leadership or you are demonstrating servant leadership, I should say, by encouraging the team members to define their ways of working in which they should feel that, uh, yes, this is something that makes sense for them and this should ensure professional cohesion. Uh, so let's hold this option for now. Let's look at option B. Suggest that the team engages in multiple team building events organized by the PMO or the project management organization. Okay, that is incorrect, right? Because that's a very, very passive way of uh, uh, developing a team. Okay, so you can't basically say to your new team members that, okay, now you have become my team member, please go and do some training, uh, which uh, someone else is providing and come back. And I should, uh, 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 I should expect that uh, you will be motivated and you will have all the right capabilities by doing that training. So how are you basically demonstrating servant leadership? Uh, you are not. Okay, so that is why option B is definitely incorrect because it is a very, very passive approach in terms of developing this new team, which is your problem statement, right? So do not forget about what the problem statement is. Let's look at option C. Keep the team members in loop by sending them status reports and highlight updates. Again, this is incorrect, right? Because this is again, very, very passive approach. How will the team members feel involved if you start sending them some random emails or one pagers uh, having status reports, highlights, updates, etc., etc. Okay, doesn't make any sense. And I hope none of you have selected this option. Let's look at option D. 
engage in one-on-one -on -one communication with each of the team members to build relationships now this is a tricky one okay because basically it is asking you that uh, you need to engage in one-to-one -one communication with each of the team members okay now you do not know how big or how small is your team okay so basically after the first iteration we have eliminated option b we have eliminated option c so it's a tie between option a and option d okay now here comes your process of elimination or your process of reasoning okay and that is why i would recommend that uh, if you go through my um, uh, daily posts on my membership community or if you have gone through my uh, 35 pdu course on udemy you should be knowing these kind of stuff by now that when you are stuck between two very close answer choices what are the items you need to keep in mind as the pmp exam candidate which will help you to eliminate the wrong option and select the right option now if you see here option d is suggesting something which uh, can be quite quite uh, let's say impractical okay now if as a project manager you are managing multiple projects for sure okay some of your projects are between execution and close out so when a project is moving from executions to close out there is a lot of validation of scope a lot of uh, acceptance of scope which you need to do handover with the product team or handover with the uh, customer which you need to do so your time is the essence here okay so does it make sense for you that you start engaging in one-on-one -on -one communication with each of the team members to build relationships at this point in time then how will you take care of your rest of your projects you can't uh, let's say get this new project which is in the initiation phase in a hyper care mode and totally forget about the other projects that you are doing right because here you don't know the size of the team because your team might be having three four five ten twenty members okay so does it really make sense to engage into one-to-one -one communications with each of the team members to build relationships okay of course it might make sense if you have all the time in the world but is it really productive i would say no okay and that is the reason why option d is incorrect and however option a is basically more correct because it is basically enabling servant leadership by you saying to the team members that look you define your ways of working i expect that you are professional enough and you exhibit that kind of a team maturity that you define your ways of working which you think might make sense for you to ensure that you have a good professional cohesion and those way of working could be revisited or reviewed after you have basically uh, uh, given the team members first a chance to define or to at least express how they would want to work right and that is the essence of servant leadership that you empower your team members and you go with the basic premise or basic assumption that yes your team members know what they should be knowing and and your team members does exhibit that kind of a professional maturity to uh, self-define or uh, self uh, let's say motivate themselves with you being their guiding star you do not like coach them or you do not like let's say spoon feed them uh, individually okay and that is the essence of servant leadership so option d is a very close answer choice guys okay option d here which you see is a very very close answer choice however it is incorrect because first it is impractical to engage into one-to-one -one communication with each of the team members okay to build relationships and secondly it probably does not exhibit uh, the sort of uh, servant leadership which uh, needs to be exhibited with terms of providing them uh, with empowerment okay or providing them that means to decide how they want to work because uh, even if you are doing one-to-one -one communication and later you can come and say that look you know what i have understood and i have uh, learned from you that how you are willing to work what are your motivators demotivators etc etc but this is how i would like you to work okay so please go ahead and execute it so that is why option d uh, does not give me that confidence that even if you are doing that one to one with your team members you are actually empowering them and uh, this empowerment is a very very critical aspect of servant leadership okay so you basically you are not empowering them but by just doing one to one with the team members to build relationships right however option a actually captures uh, the items of empowerment which is uh, which is letting them or the team to decide the ways of working to ensure professional cohesion and option a is the correct answer choice to this question i hope you are finding this exercise helpful right remember the target is to get all the five out of the five questions correct however the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct right so here comes the fifth and the final question okay so question number five guys uh, the drill will remain the same please read the question go through the options and try to answer it before we take this together okay you can pause the video here if you wish to right so let's get started an agile team empowered by the project manager and the product owner demonstrated significant progress okay during the first five iterations all right However, from the sixth iteration, the output is dropping significantly. What could be the most probable reason for this situation? 
Right. So what's happening here is there was an agile team, okay, who I'm sure they were empowered by the project manager and the product owner, okay, and they were demonstrating significant progress during the first five iterations or let's say the first five uh, sprints, okay. However, from the sixth iteration, the output has dropped significantly, okay. Now the question is what could be the most probable, okay. This is a very, very key phrase which you need to keep in mind. What could be the most probable reason for this situation, okay. So let's go through the options one by one. Option A. The team was in the storming stage and now has moved on to the norming phase. Now to understand what is a storming stage, what is a norming stage, please go back to your books or to your textbooks and study the Tuckman's ladder for team development. So basically there are five stages of Tuckman's ladder in team development. Uh, we have already discussed those okay, in our previous sessions here. So basically when you move from a storming stage, which is at the initial stages of your team uh, dynamics okay, or at the initial stages where your team is uh, uh, quite new and they are getting accustomed to each other, they storm against each other or they like um, uh, disagree and there is a lot of conflicts etc so it's like a storm okay so that's why it's called a storming phase okay however when they are able to work in a bit more harmonious manner it goes into the norming stage where they accept that okay yes this is the team that i'm going to work with for the next six eight twelve months okay whatever it is so i better get uh, accustomed to uh, some ways of working i accept some things i probably do not accept some things from some of my team members but at least we agree to disagree okay and then comes the performing stage okay where actually you go and perform so please go back to your textbooks and study tuckman's ladder of team development now coming back to option a if we apply tuckman's ladder of uh, a team moving from storming stage to norming stage okay it is actually improving the performance right because as i already discussed that if you're in a storming stage it is like a storm everyone is conflicting with each other etc etc so it's a high probability that you will perform better in the norming stage versus in the storming stage however that is not the situation here because from the sixth iteration onwards the output has dropped significantly okay so it is something inverse of what has been proposed in the uh, question scenario that is why option a is definitely incorrect let's go to option number b the team spent too much time during the first five iterations for uh, backlog refinement uh, now it can be an option okay however let's go back to the question stem the question is asking for a most probable option okay now there can be some options with the less probability there can be some options with the higher probability so you as the candidate needs to select the answer of uh, the high probability one okay so option b let's hold it for now okay let's look at option c a few team members are underperforming due to personal constraints okay i would eliminate this option right uh, and the reason I'm eliminating this option is firstly, it is of a very, very low probability. Now, if you remotely link this to some kind of a situation that could have happened within one of your or some of your team members, yes, that is a possibility. Again, I would go back to the question stem. It is not asking you for any of the possibilities. It is asking you for the most probable possibility or the most probable option. Okay. So probably C is um, uh, something which I don't feel that is... Uh, something which is more probable or it is very evident that that okay there is no evidence in the question stem or in the question scenario that is giving me confidence that some of the team members are underperforming due to personal constraints okay so of course in individuality this option can seem okay however if you link it to the context of the question it is a very very remote probability okay of course it can be true okay however you need to go back to the question stem it is asking you for the most probable option okay not just any option okay otherwise anything can be linked to this scenario okay so yeah option c might be correct but it is a very very low probability so that's why i'm eliminating it that's uh, uh, reason number one and the second reason for which i am eliminating this option is there is nothing in the question stem that is suggesting me that that there has been a drop in the performance due to personal constraints within a few team members okay so that is why i eliminate this option number c let's look at option d Technical debt has set due to prioritizing speed delivery over perfect coding. Okay. Now to understand this option, you need to understand what a technical debt is. Okay. Okay. So basically what is a technical debt? So technical debt is a term that is used heavily in uh, agile type of projects where uh, it describes what results when uh, development teams take actions to expedite delivery on a piece of functionality or on a piece of feature and prioritizes speed over quality okay now this is a conscious choice okay it is not by 
uh, uh, a fluke or not by chance that suddenly the team is thinking that okay delivery is a priority than quality however sometimes when you go to your concept of developing a mvp or a minimum viable product technical debt is uh, much more in context with uh, developing uh, the minimum viable product because during the development of a minimum viable product you need not to be 100% accurate in terms of quality however you need to give at least 70 80% of what the customer is expecting so that at least you test the viability or the feasibility of the product right so that is why during the stages of an mvp or minimum viable product development technical debt is something which is very very relevant because at that point in time basically what you do is you prioritize speed over over delivery okay so that at least even if the product is not 100% okay uh, you can learn fast and correct it and when you are at the final stages of the product design or product development you can fix those mistakes okay so that is the basic definition of technical debt now with that concept if we come back to this question right now if we come back to option b guys what option b is saying that the team spent too much time during the first five iterations for backlog refinement now this is a bit counterintuitive right because if the team has spent too much time during the first five iterations okay sorry about the typo guys it is a first okay so the team has spent too much time during the first five iterations for backlog refinement now the problem here is if the team has spent too much time then how can they demonstrate significant progress that is my first argument and the second argument is basically your iteration starts after your backlog refinement right so even if you have spent too much time in your backlog refinement you can still get your iterations completed fast because probably you are more in sync with what you need to deliver at that point in time. However, option B is falling apart primarily because even if I understand the team has spent too much time okay, in backlog refinement, how can they demonstrate significant progress during the first five iterations? Even if I take that, okay, backlog refinement is a part of the entire iteration process. Okay, That is why option B falls apart. Okay, And that is why option B is incorrect. So the correct answer to this question is option D, where we can uh, definitely definitely say with a very very high probability that the technical debt has set in due to prioritizing speed of delivery because in the first five iterations the team was basically prioritizing the speed of delivery over perfect coding okay now that is a most most probable option because probably what the team was doing during the first five iterations was they were developing the minimum viable product and that was fast the team was consciously choosing uh, speed of delivery over uh, quality and that is why uh, the first five iterations has gone very fast however from the sixth iteration onwards when the technical debt is like set off and now you are focusing more on quality than on speed of delivery uh, the performance has dropped okay so that is why option d is the most probable option again i will go with the premise that the question stem is asking to identify the most probable option okay the option with the highest probability and as per the analysis that we have done in this question option d seems like the most probable option for this scenario okay so the correct answer to this question is option d so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score okay i'd be very very interested to know that also if you have scored less please do not be demotivated okay you just need a bit more preparation do a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps and you are able to fix those on time okay thank you for watching and i will see you again next month with another session on PMP exam practice questions and answers. Have a nice day and bye for now.